Why are there fingerprints on my telescope again, General Tarkin? I'm sorry, Lord Vader. I hope it won't happen again. No, it won't. Hi, Joe. What are you up to, mate? Oh, hey, Glenn. Well, not much. I'm just setting up my my filters in my filter wheel. I got those antlers. What? Why? What did you see? Oh, nothing. Mind you, I did think I was going to catch you playing with your Lego figurines again. Good. Good. And and let's not mention that anymore. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm getting ready to put all my filters in. Yeah. Good um, luck with them, mate. Hope you get them in the right way round. Yeah. Appreciate that. I know you had some issues getting the uh, getting them the right way. So hopefully I I won't have that problem. Oh, that's really cool. Listen, I'll let you get on with that, and uh, let me know how you get on, and uh, I'll speak to you later. Cool, cool. Cheers, mate. Right on, Take dude. care. Hello, this is Joe. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be covering installing some Antlia 36 millimeter unmounted filters into a filter wheel. I just really, it was a quick video. I want to go over how to tell which direction faces the camera and which direction faces the telescope, and then how to actually put them in. So let's get started. So here's the filters. They come packaged just like this. Um, first there's a, a baggie and the filter in a box. And then with the narrow band filters, I got a, you get a paper. And I'll let you know uh, some important facts actually. So this is the S2 three nanometer pro filter and it's got a, a peak transmission of greater than 90% and they give you the chart and I don't know if this is just the same chart for all their filters or if this is specific they tested this filter I I honestly don't know I, I for the price they're well I I'd call them a budget filter compared to chroma or astrodon but you know they're they are a little bit more than than the batters or bader and the uh up the longs and that um so I but for if it was chroma or astronaut, I expect that this would be the actual filter measured, tested. Um, I don't know if that's the case with these. I, I, I'm leaning towards no, but I'm not positive. So maybe it is. Um, if so, it's really nice. I, I'll take uh, at half the price of chromas and astrodons and, and plus 90% or greater than 90% peak transmission. Can't ask for much more than that, really. So here's the filters, and I'm sure if anyone's been looking or researching these filters, you've seen that they are packaged pretty well. Um, they're probably ni they're nicer than my other filters that I've had in the past. Um, they come with a magnetic case, and I'm not really sure what... I mean, it's a really nice touch to see them like this in this magnetic case, but the thing is, is they're going to go in my in my filter wheel and, and they'll probably never come out um, unless I was to sell them or something or replace them. Once they're in there, they probably won't come out. Uh, I'll look at them again to clean them, but I don't know what I'm going to do with this nice case. It is nice though. So I'll just open one of these up. Um, so I put these gloves on and I'm really not used to using these gloves. But I didn't want to get any oil or fingerprints on the filter, of course, so I thought it'd be a good idea to use this glove. Uh, I'm not sure how close the camera's getting this, but. So I didn't want to make a, I didn't want to point out. Um, wow. It is really hard to get these out without touching them. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and Well, I've really torn the hell. <laughs> I've really torn this up. Um, I might as well just go tear it up the rest of the way now. Um, I just normally I think I'd slip these in, but I kind of wanted to show you. Um, they are blacked out. I don't know how good the camera is going to pick it up, but they are blacked out on the edges, um, which is super important because you'll, you'll get light in and you'll have to figure out a way to blacken them if they weren't. And then here's the filter. Again, this is the S2. It looks very silver on one side and very reddish, pinkish on the other side. 
So this should be pretty easy to figure out which way goes towards the camera. Now the normal test is to get something like a pen, like this one, and to look at it in such a way that when you put the pen in the reflection off the filter should look ghosted. And so right away I could tell that this side is the side that looks ghosted. The, the one with the, with the pinkish hue to it. I don't know if they're all gonna be this simple. The one without, without the hue, I'm not seeing any ghosting at all. So I don't see like a double pan inside of here. Okay, so the filter wheel did come with a nice screwdriver and you're gonna need it. There are eight screws on here that we'll need to remove on the cover. Now, if you follow my channel, you know that on my existing filter wheel, my one and a quarter inch filters, I have some Astrodon filters and they're a little higher than the seven millimeters and they get stuck on these ribs in here. So what I did on that one is I flipped this over and it works perfect, but it is gonna actually be nice to be able to put this back on the normal way for once and not have a million questions as to why I have my lid on backwards. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to find all the little screws. And I don't know if you can see these, but they are tiny. And then the gaskets, or I call them gaskets, but they're, they're the covers that, that hold the filters inside the filter wheel. So I'm gonna put this to the side. And I'm gonna start with one. And for one, I use luminance. I usually do luminance, red, green, blue, and then sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen for SHO. It makes it really easy just to remember uh, because that's the way you usually type it out and write it out. So three. So the first thing I need is my luminance, which I believe is this one. No idea. Everything's rubbed off. Rubbed off. I'm gonna assume that we have red, green, and blue, and this is gonna be luminance because it's not red, green, or blue. So we have our luminance filter, and I'm gonna show you a close-up of what the filter wheel looks like inside. And then I'm gonna move the camera so that instead of looking at me, we could actually look inside in the filter. I don't think the luminance really has a particular way to be put on and it looks very clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and just slip that in. Um, that went in pretty easy. And I'm gonna take one of these gaskets I'm gonna to continue to call them gaskets because that's what they look like. Even though that's not what they are. I'm gonna set that down. I'm gonna use one of these little cases to hold my screws. See if this is magnetic, and it is. Oh, you can't see. And you still can't see. Anyway, the screwdriver that they give you with this is magnetic, which should help tremendously. And we're just gonna line this up. And that's probably too tight for the first one. It doesn't seem like what you wanna do is tighten them up too tight until you get them all in. Okay, 
Now, I'm curious because I've never used these unmounted ones before. And uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of see. <laughs> just want to make sure it's not going to fall out. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it seems very solid in there. So, okay, I will be back when I have the rest of them filled up. So here's the filter wheel completely populated. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see, make anything out of use when you go to do yours, but this is what it looks like. These are the colors. This is the way that mines come out. And I'm pretty sure that I've got them all with the reflective side coated in. Actually, look at that. This one is the wrong, facing the wrong way. I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera, but you can see the blue outline around that pan inside of the filter. And that is not what we want to see. We want to see clear like a mirror on all of these with no ghosting and they are correct except for this one so I will flip this around and then I will put the cover back on okay so I flipped over the hydrogen filter and so what we have is the luminance which is pretty much clear but it does have a red sheen to it in in the camera I think as I tilt it up you'll see that goes away and so that's the problem here because I was hoping that I, by showing you the open filter wheel, that it would make your life easier when you go to install these. But unfortunately, they're taking on different colors as the, as the light shines off of the camera. But for the most part, we've got red, green, blue, sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen. Number seven. Let's see if. So there we have it, we have our filter wheel completed, and now we just need to go get it on the camera and then get the whole thing out on the telescope, and let's test these filters out. So that the video doesn't get too long, I've decided to just jump right into some of the sample images I took with these filters. The weather here hasn't really been cooperating too much, but I did manage to get a few test subs. I wanted to test the narrowband filters for myself to see how bad the halos would be on some of the bright stars. And well, I was pleasantly surprised. So let's start with Propus, which is a very bright star around magnitude 3 next to the Jellyfish Nebula. Now, I managed to get an O3 shot in the clouds came through and I wasn't able to get a hydrogen alpha. But I was able to snap a, uh, a 10 minute exposure on O3 and also on S2. So here's the O3. I've really not seen much in the way of Halloween at all. Uh, this is just a single 10 minute sub, which all I was able to get. And so here it is kind of um, zoomed out a little bit. I also have a chroma 3 nanometer filter uh, image that I took. And this, unfortunately, these aren't exact. They're on different nights. This was taken uh, with the 294mm Pro instead of the 2600. And this was also taken on the Xenostar 81 telescope and not the Edge HD like the other one. But you can see that there is a little bit of a difference. And th so this is the chroma. And there's really no halo at all to speak of either on this one. And let's just go look at the other one again. So it's pretty good. I, I was very excited to see this. And then I was able to also get um, a Sulfur 2. And so here's the Sulfur 2 image. Now the clouds have started to come through. Um, normally the Jellyfish Nebula is really rich in Sulfur. So it would have been, you would have seen a lot right here. Unfortunately, like I said, the clouds were coming through. Uh, towards the end of the sub exposure, which is why I don't have a hydrogen alpha either So I don't know how good of a test this is because Propus might have been a little bit subdued behind the clouds, but Here it is anyway. This is what I got for it and this is um, in comparison to my Astrodon 3 nanometer filter on the same target and You could tell that the, the clouds had come through. So here's the sulfur that I'm talking about. 
that you would have seen. Um, this is on one 10 minute sub. Again, different camera, different telescope, different night. So these tests aren't exact by any means. I just wanted to compare um, some bright stars that I knew that I had taken with the the higher brand higher brand name filters with with these filters. So because I couldn't get any hydrogen alpha on Propus, I decided to jump over to Alnatok next to uh, next to the Flame and Horsehead Nebula, which is a pretty bright star. I believe the magnitude on that star is 1.7 or one and a half or 1.8, and it's in that area. It's it's much brighter. It's probably a whole magnitude brighter than than Propus. And so here's the Antlia S2. Now I don't have a comparison uh, for S2 because I normally don't, in the past, I didn't take uh, sulfur on this image. It was mostly LRGB with hydrogen alpha. So I do have a hydrogen alpha, but I did manage to get a sulfur. And here it is here. Um, we could zoom in a little bit more. But I'm really impressed with this. There, there's no haloing whatsoever that I could tell uh, on this at all. It, it was a very nice shot, and it's just in a single sub. And we'll look at the hydrogen alpha now, and it's pretty much the same. Um, no real haloing to speak of. No big giant halo around the, the whole image like you see in some images. And, and I've taken in the past, too, with some ZWO filters where I'll get a giant halo and then I'll get a smaller one around the star. I'm not seeing any of that in here. So very, very impressed with with the hydrogen alpha three nanometer pro filter from Antlia. And just to compare, here is an Astrodon. Now again, this was taken with a different telescope, a different camera, but it's the three nanometer hydrogen alpha Astrodon filter. So that's the comparison. There's the Astrodon, and this is the Antlia of Alnatok. I also wanted to let you know that Glenn's done a video on these Antlia filters as well, and you should go check out his channel and his video because he's done some more testing with the Antlia 3 nanometer Pro filters. So you'll have some more comparisons to see. I'll leave a link down in the description below to his video. Well, I hope you found that video useful or entertaining. If so, please go ahead and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to check out my video where I made a camera ring for the ZWO cameras, check out this video right here. And also, if you want to see how I repaired my CEM120 mount, Check this video out right here. See you in the next video.